Hi guys, this is App Unwrapper. I'm back with Genshin Impact and it's update 3.1. I'm gonna pick up where I left off. We are doing the Archon quest. Ooh, what was that? Traveler? It is you! Ah! The voice! It's Hapasia! Ah, what a pleasant surprise! It's so nice to see the two of you again. Who's this? She's a scholar we met in the Avidia Forest. When we last saw each other, she was still training in the... Uh... What's it called? Satyavada life? Oh, I see. That's right, we're old friends. Uh, you've come at just the right time. Ever since I've come here, hardly anyone has even talked to me. Hapasia, you're way too excited about this. Actually, for you to leave the Avidia Forest means... Oh, you're not in training anymore? Wait, no. Did you already finish your training and reach Pari Porno life? <laughs> what do you think? My consciousness has already managed to make contact with the Divine. <sighs> You did it? Congratulations! <laughs> it's so exhilarating to share this sublime joy with others at long last! When my consciousness made contact with the gods... Ah, what a supreme and unparalleled experience that was! That sounds incredible! Oh, alright. Uh, actually, please wait. I haven't forgotten my promise to you. Remember? I promise to help you understand what you saw from Ermansoul once I gained deeper insights. My current self has not only gained true insight, but I can even help you establish a direct connection to the consciousness of the Divine. You... you can do that? I've never heard of anything like that, but... If you want to give it a try, I'll do my best to protect your consciousness during the process. Hold on. I brought some spirit borneal with me. This is still a crucial part of the ceremony. Uh, we're using that incense again? All right now. Hold my hand. I'll help you establish a pathway to connect your consciousness. Okay. Ready? It took three betrayals for me to finally understand. The world is just an elaborate tapestry of lies. My fury will never be quelled. The first to betray me was a god, my creator, my mother. Valuing strength above all, she saw no worth in me and I was discarded. The second was a human, my family, my friend. Consumed by fear, he saw me as an abomination. The third was one exactly like me. A hope for the future. A fledgling barely out of the nest. Powerless before his mortality, he broke his promise to me. Humans, they can't be trusted. And the gods fill me with pure loathing. So I said good riddance. <laughs> I denounced the world and laugh in its face. <laughs> My chest will never again be defiled by worldly filth. I will scrub away every last trace of human emotion. Then it will be empty, 
a blank slate and ready to receive a supreme gnosis, brimming with pure divinity. <laughs> There is no need to fear. The pain will be brief. Your era is coming to an end. Huh? Oh. What was that? I really did not expect that. Did we actually just see the Balladeer's memories? Everything matches what we know about him. But how is he connected to the divine consciousness that Hapasia was talking about? You saw it, right? You felt it, right? Oh, such a majestic god. Such a noble will. Such sublime emotion. Alas, shame. If only... If only that which beats within my chest wasn't a filthy mortal heart. Oh, oh, great and merciful God, please grant me forgiveness and salvation. Hmm. Do you understand now? I'm afraid this is no peri porno life, but rather... Ah! You, why are you so mean to me? Why is everyone hiding from me? I found divine wisdom. Shouldn't I receive praise and honor? Haven't I uncovered that light in the darkness? Papaya? That's how I always thought everything should be. Wait, have I... already lost my mind? Getting weird. What is happening? Why is it so shaky? <sighs> okay, we finally lost him. <sighs> Are you okay, Nahida? Wait, no, something feels different. <gasps> You're back. Oh, the traveler's back. Nahida was controlling your body for a while. It seemed like she jumped over to you as an emergency measure right before the Catherine puppet was destroyed. After that, Tainari heard the commotion and came over. He helped us defeat the mercenaries and then he ran with us all the way here. What? You swapped places? You mean your consciousness also went into Nahida's body? Wait, then where is Nahida's consciousness? Where is she now? I never imagined that an individual's consciousness could be transferred around like this. Had I not seen it with my own eyes, I would have never believed it. I don't think this can be achieved with current human technology. Also, while we were running, the consciousness in your body told me to pass on a message. She said, 
The doctor has found a way to trap my consciousness, so I can't journey with you anymore. But even in a moonless night, a shower of starlight can still drown out illusions and lies. <sighs> oh no! He is trapped in the sanctuary of Sora's Thana for good this time! Was that message all she left for us? It's pretty vague. Oh, that makes sense! Since the doctor captured her, she won't be able to say anything without him knowing! She's being extra careful. Even in a moonless night, a shower of starlight can still drown out illusions and lies. Huh. Paimon knows the moon illusions and lies are from the alchemical divination at the Subzeru's festival. Didn't Nahida use a starlight analogy before? It had something to do with Sataria. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Huh. Do you think that Hida was telling us to go find help in the desert? But she isn't with us anymore. Uh, think we'll be okay? Paimon, you said Sanctuary of Suristana. Does this mean that this Nahida you're talking about, the consciousness who was occupying the Traveler's body, is the Dendro Archon? Uh, your guess is correct, but the situation's a bit complicated, so it's really hard for us to explain right now. That's all right. A scholar's curiosity doesn't need to be appeased right away. As for the complicated nature of the situation, safe to say I have witnessed that for myself. I've spent some time with you, and it looks like the Dendro Archon's also on your side, so... I trust you. Thank you, Tainari! Oh, actually, we came here to ask you a question. What do you know about the project that the Sages have been working on? Ah, that... While I was indeed invited to join that project, the Sages were always secretive about its scope and goals, so I eventually declined. All I know is that that project has something to do with the restoration of Ermansoul. Huh? Did you see something when you were in Nahida's body? What? Do you have any evidence? Hmm. Hmm, so that's what happened. That explains why Hypatia's symptoms were different from those of the other scholars who went mad. It's because she made contact with the consciousness of a new god who is still in the process of being born. Tainari, did you leave the Avidia forest because of Hypatia? I did. I noticed Hypatia's mental anomalies. But since her symptoms were rather atypical, I secretly took her to Pardis Di and began searching for a way to return her to her normal self. If I didn't take action, Hypatia would have already been taken by the Matra to the desert, doomed to a life of exile at Aru Village. Now that you mention it, I knew the Academia has never thought particularly highly of Lesser Lord Kusanali, but... But I still didn't expect them to do something as arrogant as creating a new god. Looks like I made the right decision by not accepting their invitation. The Doctor and the Balladeer. We have two Fatui Harbingers in Sumeru. Sounds like we're in for a bad time. From your description, I don't think they've completed their project. There may still be room for us to intervene. But then... What is the connection between creating a new god and restoring Ermansoul? Yeah, it feels like we're still nowhere close to figuring out the Sage's goals. Right, we've pretty much gone over everything we need to know, so we should head out. How about you, Tainari? What are you going to do? I'll stay here for now. I still want to try a few more things to help Papasia. If you're planning to go into the desert, Start by heading for Caravan Rebat. That'll be your fastest route. Come find me here if there's anything else I can do to help. May the Spirit of Wisdom go with you. Thanks, Tainari. Hopefully Hapasia will feel better soon. We're off then. Hmm. So I was supposed to do that first before going to the desert. But then I wouldn't have gotten him upgraded at all.
interesting. Didn't expect Mooch's stuff right now. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I. But where are those who... Violet grass is a plant that... ...enjoys a moist environment and is best picked after it rains. If you should choose to pick any, be sure to store them appropriately. call this the wall of Samiel. It's made to block sandstorms from the outside. Oh, if it's this tall, it's gotta be the divine work of greater Lord Ruka Devata, right? Enough gawking. Come on, follow me. Huh? Hey. Over here. she go? Ugh, how did we lose him? They were just here a second ago. More Aramite mercenaries? Who are they working for this time? Ugh, anyway, Traveler, it seems like we were being followed again. You were too careless. You should have noticed those hopeless amateurs trailing you a long time ago. There's no need to thank me. I've never cared to keep track of personal favors. All I did was correct a mistake I happened to come across. It's a habit I developed at the Academia. You really gave Paimon a scare, Alhatham. We never thought we'd run into you here. Last time we met at Port Ormos, didn't you say you were going back to the Academia? <gasps> Wait. Don't tell Paimon that you're here to take us back on their orders. Oh. So you've already landed yourselves on the Academia's hit list. <laughs> I can't say that I didn't expect it. However, had I wished to turn you over to the Academia, don't you think you'd already be the Eremite's honored guests by now? Oh, right. Um, you do have a point. <laughs> I have no interest in running errands for that project. As a scholar, I've always belonged to the camp that promotes researcher autonomy. <sighs> and these days... You're more fascinating than anything the sages can offer. Hmm. Not quite. To tell you the truth, I'm still investigating the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Unfortunately, I've run into some difficulties. Everyone says the capsule originated in the desert and was eventually moved to Port Ormos. If I am to get to the bottom of this, I must understand how the capsule first came to be. Which brings me back to you and why you're so interesting. The leader of Ainul Ahmar used the Divine Knowledge Capsule right in front of you, and upon seeing him, your expression became perplexed, and you were lost in thought for quite some time. To have that kind of reaction, I think you must have realized something. Are you interested at all in sharing what you've been hiding from me? Oh, Atham, you really have a ridiculous eye for detail. What kind of person even notices or remembers stuff like that? So that's your answer. <laughs> well, I do work for the Academia after all. So considering that, it is indeed wise to keep your cards close to your chest. But that does prove you do have some undisclosed information about the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Am I right? <sighs> no matter. Rather than simply learning the answers from you, 
I'd still prefer to investigate on my own. Speaking of, you two are also headed to the desert? That's right! We have the same plan as you! But we don't really have any concrete goals at the moment. Then I'd suggest starting with Aru Village. It's the largest settlement in the desert, so it'll probably have more resources and intel than anywhere else. Well, would you like to head there together? It's always better to travel with someone you know. Let's go! Hmm. I've already been there, though. Before us lies Aru Village, the safe haven of the desert folk. Whoa, this landscape is really something else. What a cool place! Let's go check it out! Unless my memory fails me, we have barely spoken two words to each other before now at the Academia. Would you care to enlighten me as to when and how I invited the General Mahamatra's wrath? Okay, so it's pronounced Sino. All this time I've been wrong. Um, also, I did not expect that battle to be part of the game. I thought it was just preview stuff. Oh, Haytham. Do not think you can escape my judgment, just because you managed to escape my attack. <laughs> judgment? So that's how you'd characterize your actions here, is it? Or would elimination perhaps be a more accurate description? Had I used my full strength, not even this traveler would have been able to stop me. Though styled like an assassination, I sought only to ensure that my target would be unable to flee or resist. Standard practice for the Matra. As well you know. Seem to me more like your own personal touch. Uh, who, who is that, Al Haytham? Did you call him General Mahamatra? Yes. General Mahamatra Sino. Head of all the Matra at the Academia. He's a formidable hunter, and the ultimate nightmare for any who have committed academic crimes. You seem to have placed a lot of trust in Al Haytham to the point of blocking an attack for him. If I were you, I'd never choose to side with him. I wouldn't believe a single word that comes out of his mouth. I have been pursuing this scribe for a long time. I urge you, stand back and do not seek to defend him any longer. Otherwise, there will be consequences. Has Al Haytham done something wrong? Hyman doesn't think he's as bad as you've made him out to be. I won't waste my breath explaining things. Ah, oh, Haytham. I saw it during our fight. Take it out. The Divine Knowledge Capsule you're hiding on your person. Unless you want me to retrieve it for myself. Hmm. <laughs> Very perceptive of you. Nothing escapes Amatra's senses. Capsule? Didn't it fall into the Matra's hands in Port Ormos? No wonder you speak with such confidence, Sino. But I must admit, I'm very curious. What does this capsule mean to you? And why, as General Mahamatra of the Academia, are you all alone in the desert? As far as I'm aware, the other Matra have been speculating about your disappearance. Have you been given a mission that's... let's say... Morally dubious? If I was the real target of your mission, 
What was stopping you from simply using your authority and resources to judge me within the walls of the academia? <sighs> I should have known you'd be difficult to deal with. You two! Ugh. What should we do, Traveler? Paima feels like we can't trust either of them! Ahem. <clears throat> well, look at you two, acting all tough and self-righteous over there. Yeah, it's there. Wait, do you? out here otherwise these two are gonna start fighting again yeah sure looks that way two giants from the academia duking it out once and for all not something you get to see every day that's for sure listen I know you academic types love to fill up your big brains with self-righteous morality and lord your empty rules and virtues over each other but how dare you bring your petty disputes into the safe haven of Aru village it seems like someone's gonna have to beat some sense into your thick skulls until you finally learn to respect these grounds. <sighs> hey, did either of you hear a word I just said? Hmm. Whoa, what's going on? The wind's so strong. Is this a sandstorm? Paimon's gonna get blown away. Another sandstorm? What's up with these recently? Hey! All of you, over here, quickly! We have to take cover! Someone's calling for us! Oh, this wind is too strong! Let's get over there! Candace! That sounded like Candace. Uh, come on, you two! Jeez, are all of you academia folks such hard work? Move it! All right, stop yelling. <laughs> Sardines with three people who want to tear each other limb from limb? <laughs> sure, why not? Sounds fun. Uh, the air is so thick and heavy. Paimon can hardly keep floating anymore. My sincere apologies, everyone. This is the home of our village chief. I will have to ask you to make do with this small room until the sandstorm dies down. Please, let me introduce myself. I am Candace, protector of Aru Village. Our savior has come at last! Nice to meet you, Candace. The name's Paimon. Thank you so much for helping us. <laughs> There's no need to thank me. It's only right to help each other when the weather gets rough. Wow. She's so gentle and caring. Like a nice older sister. Unlike those guys over there. All right. Now that we're all better acquainted, we should return to the topic at hand. As a guardian charged with the responsibility to protect my fellow villagers from harm, I was observing your conflict from afar, even before the sandstorm started. And now that you have set foot within our village itself, it is all the more my responsibility to make absolutely sure that you pose no threat whatsoever to us. Her design is so good. So please, have an honest and sincere conversation with one another, and put your hostile feelings to rest. If anyone dares to start anything again while they are under this roof, I will not hesitate to send them out for some quality time with the creatures of the Sandstorm. Oh! Uh, on second thought, Paima may have misjudged Candace's character. <laughs> and that goes for you too, Miss Dia. Do I make myself clear? <sighs> All right, we got it, Candace. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. So, which of you will begin? I was supposed to be a mediator, but uh, I might have gotten a little too involved just now. Anyway, one of those two should probably start talking. Wait, that was you trying to be a mediator? <sighs> I have nothing to hide, so there's no shame in explaining myself. While all Haytham wasn't wrong about the other Matra not knowing my whereabouts, it's not because I've been assigned a morally dubious mission. Rather, I've chosen to exile myself. Huh? 
Exile yourself? A little while ago. I discovered that there was data missing in the Academia's project planning and development files. What little they did report clearly did not match the project's actual progress. As General Mahamatra, I had the responsibility and authority to request an audit. However, to my surprise, the person responsible for the erroneous data was none other than Grand Sage Azar himself. I tried to investigate the issue myself before submitting a formal audit request, but I soon found that all leads and potential pieces of incriminating evidence were carefully concealed from me. I began to realize that they were cautious of me from the very beginning. Unsurprisingly, the Grand Sage rejected my audit request as soon as the submission reached his desk. He even said to me, The power of the General Mahamatra is granted by the Sages. You have no right to judge us. Hmm... So they really are up to no good. I realized then that to the Grand Sage, the Matra are nothing more than tools for the Sages to assert and maintain their control over knowledge. The vows that we took, the principles that we strive to uphold, they are meaningless to the Academia of today. I believed it would be wise to flee the Academia before the Sages had a chance to take action against me. This way, they can no longer see nor predict my actions. I will never give up on this investigation. There's no need for someone else to give me power or authority. Once I find the truth, I will administer judgment by my own name. Sino seems to have the same goal as us. We're all investigating the sages. Plus, now that he's no longer the General Mahamatra, he somehow feels a lot less scary. Well, Sino, if that's your story, then why did you see Al Haytham as a target? When I was investigating the matter in the Academia, I overheard a conversation between Al Haytham and a sage. The sages asked you to investigate a blonde haired traveler. Do you dispute this, Al Haytham? Uh, what? Like many parts of the project, this assignment was undocumented. Now throw in your suspicious behavior with the Divine Knowledge Capsule, and I think we deserve an explanation. Hmm. Yes. I was indeed tasked with investigating the Traveler. Oh, hey, Thumb! After all, the promised reward was so great that hardly any scholar could have refused. The Sage told me, Once you've completed this assignment, I can give you a glimpse of Divine Knowledge. A most enticing offer. Unfortunately, those academics don't know me at all. Their words contained one key piece of information. Namely, that divine knowledge indeed exists. That gave me all I needed to know. From my perspective, the sages are far from trustworthy. Think about it. Isn't it a little strange they're so willing to share divine knowledge with anyone, even as a reward? So... I began my own investigation following the lead of the Divine Knowledge Capsule. In the end, I realized my wisdom in committing to this rather than collaborating with the Sages. Had I been less guarded, I probably would have ended up like that Ainul Ahmar mercenary, incapable of remaining sane for long enough to hold a conversation. You mean... that the Sages originally planned to dispose of you, using one of those capsules that drive people insane? I'd already given up on the assignment by then. I only told the Academia I was waiting in Port Ormos for you to appear so they wouldn't suspect anything. So it came as quite a surprise when I encountered my erstwhile target while investigating the Divine Knowledge Capsule. Criminals do love to talk about coincidences. Even though I ran into the Traveler by chance, I had no intention of providing assistance to the Academia. Also, you should remember... You were the ones who decided to follow me and strike up a conversation after I left that tavern. That's true. Al Haytham helped us out at Caravan Rebot as well. Maybe he's telling the truth. I'm willing to apologize, if that's worth anything to you. 
I took the Divine Knowledge Capsule behind your back because I judged its existence to be a significant risk. I felt that it would be best for no one to interact with it before it had been properly studied. <laughs> After all, curiosity often proves to be the most dangerous thing in this land. I like his eyes. You should be well aware, Scribe Alhatham, that curiosity can also lead you to danger and suspicion. Answer me this. Did the sages share any information about their project with you? Have I not made myself clear? You and I are both distrusted by the Academia. Do you really think they would tell me anything? Fine. Although you haven't completely proven your innocence, I won't regard you as an enemy, for now. As you wish. Mm hmm Good. I'm glad to see you two clearing up your misunderstandings. And now you, Dia. I believe it's your turn. Oh, sorry. Whatever the boys were talking about must have been so boring that I spaced out. Ahem. <clears throat> My situation is pretty straightforward. My employer, Dunyarzad of the Homiyani family, is friends with the Traveler and is currently recovering from her illness at home. I had nothing going on, so I decided to return to Aru Village for a visit. I was actually looking forward to a pretty exciting time getting back together with everyone here. But then I saw these two random guys in the middle of a pointless argument. It ticked me off, and things went downhill from there. Is that all? Well, I will admit that definitely sounds like your style. In that case, welcome back, dear. That's more like it. I missed you all so much, Candace. Huh? Whoa! What was that sound? No need to worry. Now that you're no longer at each other's throats, please make yourselves at home. I'll take a quick trip outside to clear out some of those creatures in the sandstorm. C creatures In the sandstorm? Uh, are you sure you don't want some backup? Fighting in a sandstorm is not for the faint-hearted. Anyone without extensive training in these conditions is at a disadvantage. You needn't worry. Yeah, just leave them to Candace. <laughs> Don't worry, she's as tough as they come. The wind's died down. That means the sandstorm's over, right? Candace still isn't back yet, though. Is she alright? Maybe we should go out and check on her. When you put it that way, even I'm starting to feel a little worried. Alright, let's go. We've been here long enough, and the boys are as chatty as the floor. Uh-oh. Roof towns. Oh, Candace, you're still fighting? You've been out here dealing with these creatures the entire time? Yes. They just keep coming in waves. I've lost count of how many I've defeated. Before I realized it, even the sandstorm had stopped. Ah, here comes another wave! <laughs> Leave this round to us. I got interrupted earlier, but now I have something to take my anger out on. <laughs> it's been quite a while since I've seen the flame main in action. I'll leave these to you then. I'll be sure to put on a good show. <laughs> Let's go! Do I get to play as her? Aww. Gather! Quietly now. You got another wave! When are they ever gonna let up? Gotcha! The creature stopped appearing! Was that the last of them? A 
battle we fought just now was probably the aftermath of the sandstorm. So we should be safe for the time being. One second, sorry. Well fought, everyone. No injuries, I hope. Huh? Who are you? Ah, my apologies. I haven't had a chance to greet you yet. I had my hands full taking care of the village's elderly and children. I am the chief of Aru Village. Everyone usually calls me Uncle Anpu. Sir, I am also originally from the desert. But I have not been back for some time now. May I ask if such sandstorms are common? I can't say they've always been common. Uh, but recently, the storms have become increasingly severe and frequent. Besides sandstorms, we also occasionally get earthquakes. Uh, according to an investigator who stayed in the village a while ago, these unusual natural phenomena are related to the withering of Ermensul. Another effect of Ermensul's withering. So, Ermensul's withering causes withering zones in the forest, and sandstorms and earthquakes here in the desert? Everything in the natural world is inextricably connected to Ermensul. These regional symptoms can indeed be a reflection of Ermensul's present state. <sighs> Everyone in Aru Village needs to take good care of themselves. Uh, speaking of which, why haven't I seen a single village keeper since I got here? Village Keeper? Who are they? Village guards like Candace? Does your curiosity know no bounds? Village Keeper is how Aru Village refers to mad scholars, exiled here by the Academia. Most of them are scholars who lost their sanity after a period of training in the Avidia Forest. The Academia believes that their crazed mutterings may have a negative effect on the psyches of other scholars. So, they're forcibly exiled to the desert. Though if you ask me, it's all a boatload of nonsense. Alas, that's exactly what we've been trying to investigate. One by one, the village keepers have been mysteriously disappearing without a trace. But no one in the village has ever seen them leave. If you're planning to stay around the village for the next few days, I'd appreciate it if you could keep an eye out for them. I've had encounters with those people in the past. I'll see what I can do to help. The Matra are the ones responsible for their exile. Now that you're no longer with them, are you trying to alleviate your guilt and atone for your past sins? <laughs> I'm fascinated by how you think. Mock me if you will. But if you are guilty, I will eliminate you. Regardless of my position or identity. Oh, you're the former General Mahamatra. You must be an expert in these kinds of investigations. Thank you for your help. Is it because you're reminded of Hapasia? Oh, these poor scholars. First they lose their sanity, now this! We need to help get them back home safe and sound. But, uh, is it really a good idea to tag along with Sino? You seem like you really don't trust him. I'll be grateful for the assistance. <laughs> no doubt you will do a better job than some of my former subordinates. Oh. Let's start by finding a spot to share what we know so far. Crystal flies. Okay, hold on a second because I believe there is a kid here with beetles. Just have to find him. The hell is he? In Aru Village, please respect the local customs. Is he 
Okay. that I'm trying to find. It's no was. Let me try to figure this out. As man. Find him later. Although I've sent myself into exile, I'm still doing essentially the same things as before. Do you still have any questions for me before we start our investigation? One of my former subordinates told me that this title has its origins in a strange incident. The Academia has long exiled mad scholars to Aru Village. A mysterious phenomenon exists here. When mad scholars first arrive, they are as incoherent and deranged as before. But, after spending some time here, they invariably begin to calm down. Initially, the people of Aru Village greatly resented having to take in the Mad Scholars. But a strange incident one night changed that. Aru Village was struck by the strongest earthquake in living memory. Seeing buildings on the verge of collapse all around him, the then chief of the village was preparing to take everyone to safety. Suddenly, he noticed a mad scholar crouching in a corner, caressing the ground with his hands. A soft, green light radiated from him, like a divine glow against the backdrop of night. Despite the powerful tremors that ripped through the ground that night, all the houses remained upright, almost as if they had grown roots reaching deep into the ground. In the end, not a single building collapsed, and no one was hurt. After that, the people of Aru Village treated the mad scholars with greater kindness, and began to refer to them as the village keepers. A soft green light? A mad scholar protecting Aru Village? Hmm. What do you make of it, Traveler? Paimon thinks so too. Actually, Sino, do you know if any of the Mad Scholars continued to wear their Akasha terminals at Aru Village? In theory, they would continue wearing them so the Academia could still monitor their activities. With that said, the main Akasha system would no longer have any interaction with them. Calm down, it was probably Nahida who calmed them. If you are able to draw a conclusion from this one story alone, then it appears you possess much more information than I do. So, what do you make of the story? Really? Lesser Lord Kusanali. <laughs> what? You don't believe us? Lesser Lord Kusanali was definitely using the Akasha to give her power to the Mad Scholars! 
No, it's not so much that I don't believe you. I'm just struck by your reasoning. Lesser Lord Kusanali, the current Dendro Archon, is she really active in Sumeru? The Academia has always placed far greater importance on the late Greater Lord Rukadevata. They've more or less ignored Lesser Lord Kusanali, and I've never had any reason to doubt their views. In addition, I've never heard any stories about Lesser Lord Kusanali and her deeds. To me, she might as well have been a god that never existed. No way! Nahida definitely exists! She's a... how should Paimon put it? She's a good Archon who's kind and wise, even if she says weird stuff sometimes. I've spent many years interrogating criminals, so I can easily tell when someone is lying. Good! Then you should know that we're telling the truth! That look in your eyes... <laughs> I've never seen that from a liar. You two really must have met Lesser Lord Kusanali. How can this be? To think... Our Archon has been amongst us this entire time. Alright, now it's our turn to put our skills to good use for this investigation. But easier said than done. Especially since we don't have any leads. Hmm. Maybe we can start by knocking on some doors. Excuse me, are you here to help me find my grandpa? Oh, maybe it's that kid. Huh? Who are you? By the sounds of it, a resident of this village. My name is Isak. You'll help me find my grandpa, right? Okay, no, all the kids just look exactly the same. Is your grandpa a mad scholar? Hey, don't say that. Grandpa is just grandpa. Why do you have to call him that? It's not like he's a bad person or anything. Hmm. The person you're referring to is not a local. Yet you are. Why do you call him grandpa? Grandpa is just grandpa. He's my family. I, I heard everything you said to the village chief. Please, you gotta take me with you. I, I wanna find my grandpa. I, I swear I'll help. I won't be a nuisance. Ah, so you're the one who was eavesdropping on us around the village chief's house. I was planning to go out and take care of whoever it was. But I had a vague feeling that they didn't harbor any ill intent. Whoa. Oh, Haven wasn't kidding about Matra having sharp senses. Sino, he's just a kid. All he wants is to find his grandpa. Let's find a way to help him. Sorry. I was only listening in because I wanted to know where grandpa went. Honest. If you don't believe me, you can ask Miss Candace. All right. But first, let's confirm the facts with Candace. So, uh, Steely somewhere there. Go, Seely. Seely. The hell? The wind knows me. They're fast. Huh, maybe there's scarabs up here. Thank you. 
One man's stone is another man's gem. Sorry, dude. He was sleeping. Woke him up. Oh, it's my cat. Oops, I killed whatever it was, I guess. Scarabs here. This would be a perfect place to have scarabs. They're so cute. What? How come they can have a pet vulture? Stabilize. Why can't I have a pet vulture? Quietly now. Oh, a pet vulture. Hey, silly. Where'd it go? Oh, are you kidding me? Alright, let's do this first. Because then I can always come back. To it. <gasps> Ooh! Two scarabs! That was nice. So find two in one spot. Alright, let's go look for that silly that I lost.
Okay, Seely, where'd you go? That's not cool. What in the hell? Where the hell did it go? Oh, there it is. Spot Unsolicited and all the more valuable for it. <laughs> I think it's around there. It looks like it's a little further away. Where do you want to go next? If you'd like to see Liu Wei's tourist spots, I have a few references. <laughs> Time for another table eye. Lucky today. Silta. Solicited and all the more valuable for it. Uh oh. Let me get to this spot. Scarabs. Why is it so laggy? Oh, oh, foxies. Really stupid place to do this, but okay. Stabilize. One man's stone is another man's gem. Gather! 
where'd it go? Busted. Solidify. What is still happening? What? Why is it back? Stabilize. Gotcha. Nowhere to run. Solidify. Weird. One man's stone is another man's gem. Okay. Gotta be scarabs around. Come on. Boxes. Come on, scarabs. Boxes are cute, but I don't need them for upgrading stuff. Stabilize. Wind strider. It's a lot of meat. Come on, scarabs, where are you? No scarab. They look really cool though. I like them. Gather. I didn't want to kill you. Well, there's two now. I'm sorry, guys. I was just saying hello. like a puzzle. Look at these cool sculptures.
can climb them. <laughs> Very cool. Ooh. Up there. Scarabs, where art thou? Where art thou, Scarabs? Once again, getting dark. Go back. Still really bad. Okay, I only have four. Really messed up. Um back already we just wanted to confirm something with you do you know a boy by the name of Isak? <laughs> i had a feeling he'd go looking for you huh you knew this would happen yes although he tried his best to stay hidden i still noticed him eavesdropping outside the window he really wants to get his grandfather back Isak's parents were both Aramite mercenaries who rarely returned to the village after finding employment in the city. He was raised by his grandfather. Unfortunately, it was only a few years before his grandpa passed away. Isak was still very young at the time, so various families in the village took turns caring for him so he could survive. Later, an elderly mad scholar arrived at the village. Isak thought the scholar bore a striking resemblance to his grandfather, and thus often spied on the man. However, the scholar was unkempt in appearance and incoherent in speech. Although Isak referred to the man as his grandpa, he was afraid and didn't dare to approach him. One summer night, the oft mumbling and bumbling grandpa suddenly calmed down and seemed to become more lucid. He even noticed Isak hiding in the distance. So Grandpa walked up to Isak and patted him on the head. He even took Isak to the entrance of the village, where he patiently taught the boy the names of the stars, and accompanied Isak until he fell asleep. The next morning, Isak woke up and wanted to go find his Grandpa again, only to realize his Grandpa no longer recognized him. However, even so, Grandpa retained his calm expression. It's said that those who saw the scholar claimed he no longer appeared to be crazy, but appeared to be living in his own world, almost as if he were sleepwalking. Isak was thrilled that his grandpa was able to find peace, and would follow him all the time, asking him things like, Grandpa, want me to take you somewhere fun? Or, Grandpa, could you tell me stories about the stars again? All this somehow just makes Paimon feel really sad. It seems like they both deserve so much better. Perhaps. Nearly everyone who lives in the desert has some form of hardship or regret. But even so, we must still continue on with our lives. It's also my reason for fighting. I must continue to protect this land. Aw, she's cool. Hmm. 
Maybe the people have always had a considerate god watching over them. Huh? What did you say, Sino? No, nothing. As long as Esau keeps his word and doesn't get in our way, we can take him along. Perhaps you are more compassionate than I gave you credit for. Please accept my thanks on Isak's behalf, Sino. Hey, Isak! Oh, it's you guys! We've cleared everything up! Let's go find your grandpa! Really? Wow! Thank you so much! Yeah! All right. Let's ask the local residents some questions first. Wait, what? That's completed? On Act Four already. Osmanthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those who? Right. Let me check something. Go to this because there's some. Not this. This. Okay. Regret this. The wind knows me. Where are those mushrooms <laughs> to help us climb? <laughs> One with nature. <laughs> God, these dogs are pissing me off. Hey, there's a Sealy somewhere here. Down below? Keep forgetting what it's called, sorry. Every journey has its final day. Don't rush. Hmm. Huh. There it is. There's supposed to be some scarabs near it, too. Take forever. I have six. This is so bad. There's supposed to be some near here. There's another.
be some here too. <laughs> Wind strike. Supposed to be right here. They're so cute. Let me go face the ceiling. Where do you go, Seely? Why do I always lose them? Solicited and all the more valuable for it. Solidify. Gotcha. gotcha. Surrender. As one with wind and cloud. Quiet now. Did I get those right? There's supposed to be a whole bunch behind this build. Let's go there. There's supposed to be a whole bunch behind there, but I don't know if I could actually access them now. Did I check behind that thing? I don't know that I did. <sighs> but it says there's a whole lot of them. Oh, they're so cute. <gasps> there's one. Okay. Oh. 
win strategy. Yeah. Please, Garbs, please. Trying to scare away my scarabs, it's not cool. There's supposed to be a whole lot here. But they could be underground. Because there's also a teleport around here that seems to be underground. So, yeah. I think. I don't see them, so... I'm guessing that's what's going on. There's some there's supposed to be some here too. Again, I don't know if they're above ground or below ground. Oh, gonna be like that, huh? I don't know why there are eggs in the tumbleweeds, but okay. Not 100% how the, all the stuff works. I'm not 100% sure. Unsolicited, and all the more valuable for it. I don't have anything to. I'll blow upgrade, my god. It's all trash, what do you want from me? It's all junk. It's all freaking junk. Look, junk. Where the hell did it even go? Two oh my god, all into flat attack. We're crazy.
As Mantis wa Ah. Ah. I don't think I understand 100% what is happening in here. Did something. <laughs> ah. So confusing. Scarabs. Supposed to be scarabs around here. Oh wait, only one. Only one near. No, not near here. Never mind. There is supposed to be a teleporter. Let's continue on. Supposed to be a bunch over there. Don't move when it gets dark, I can't see. What is happening? Stop. 
stabilize. Busted. Ready for trial. Last one. Mirage? Seems to be some sort of order. Um, well, this is a little annoying. Are about to get oh, I didn't mean to do that. Into the wind. Understand. Oh, maybe the flaming. Okay, there's two there. There's none here. Two, three. Oh, fudge! You're annoying. There's one. Oh my God. Four. This is two. I have to reset them though. Boom, boom. Somehow, somehow it's being very weird, and it looks like one with two already. Okay, let's start over. This is one. This is two. So it's zero, one. This is two. Three. This is four. There we go. Oh my god. 
the domain. Those invisible walls were a little annoying, but otherwise, not too bad. Oh, I still need to find that torch. Alright. Oh, now I can get these. Certainly worth the extra mile. Let's open this. <laughs> There's supposed to be a bunch around here, so I'm very confused. I'm not gonna do this right now. <laughs> Are they underground? There's a whole bunch here. Oh, there's a torch. I wanted him to be... Torches? <gasps> oh, okay, it's open. Unsolicited, Where? and all the more valuable for it. Where are all. I don't get it. There's supposed to be a whole bunch of scarabs around here. There's one. I have to see others. I didn't pick them up already, did I? Mission begin. <gasps> Just three more. All right, let me find three more. Our somehow. Manthus wine tastes the same as I remember. But where are those? I'm gonna get here because there looks like there's a bunch over there. You share the memory. Sorry about the noise.
There's supposed to be some here, but I'm not sure if I could get them. Wow, okay. Oh! Okay, there's supposed to be a whole bunch nearby. They're above ground though. So hard to see. I just need three more. Come on. Let me get past 50 at least. Why? Missing them, they're it's, uh, unless they're underground. I don't know. Come on, come on, this is not cool. <laughs> they look like they should just be walking around in this big huge desert. Easily spotted, but I don't know. Are you kidding me? It's getting dark again? There's one. Just two more. It's 
teleporter, but I think it's on the ground. There's supposed to be a beetle around here. That's annoying. It's probably underground or something. I'll come back to this. So much stuff going on. It's like the opposite though of the jungle. Everything's really spread out. Shoot, I'm looking at the wrong place. What? <gasps> 
There. Okay. Finally. Okay, we're getting more crit damage. Uh, let me. Why not? Hundred and one plus a hundred and sixty. Silly. I don't know how to activate that yet. Doesn't <coughs> seem like I can. It's very quiet. Just for another second, I'll try. Hmm. When I hand this work over no, to no. the Elamites, I'll have to rephrase the request. Every journey has its final day. Don't rush. One second, sorry. Hmm. 
When I hand this work over to the Elamites, I'll have to rephrase the request. Boats are made for transferring commodities back and forth, and those that come across Lior tend to stay a while. So it is where many things come to sell. Work over to the Gone? I'm back. I want to see what she says. Add Astra. Oh, Ad nothing new. All right. All right. Let me use some resin. Take a break. You're so cute, this little guy. Best pet yet. You are not welcome here. Bust it. Gotcha. Wind strike. Game's up. Fun is over. Stabilize! Your sins weigh upon your soul! Guilty! Gather! Nowhere to run! Why isn't the shield lasting long enough? See about cooking a bit. I can cook everything, wow.
Boats are made for... Alright, um, I'm gonna take a break. Uh, that is Genshin Impact. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks, bye bye.